am so excited about this project today because I, I used the computerized quilting machine in the middle where I really wanted to design pop and I'll, I'll talk to you about that later. And then around the outside I've done all of this freehand and it's going to be completed on this show. So let's get to work. In this area where we have our squares pieced into the um, outer border, I'm going to do a feather design and of course I want it to fill in all the way around that so you can see how I do that. I'll start here with my feather stem and I don't have anything marked I, I'm just going to do a gentle curve if you wanted to mark something you on the quilt you actually could but what I've done is I just go up where I have a point of the square and then I go down where I have um, the blue area has a point. Okay, so here we go. So up on the point and down, up on the point and down. Around the corner, up on the point and down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. And then I'm running into the feather where I'm starting here. So now I'll start coming back and you'll see that I just place the feather into the area where it needs to go. Just reach out and put that teardrop in that area. Then I come back and I follow the stem up and over, over, reach out into that area and back, reach out and back. And you probably have already noticed that I'm using neon green. I seem to be in two neons right now. We go through phases, I suppose, but I don't know if I'll ever get out of this neon phase because I have found that they just make the quilts pop. Now reach out into this square on this corner, way out like this, and over. Now I know many of you would have chosen a blue thread, but look how pretty this green bright green thread looks. And I've also used that in the cross hatching area of the quilt. Okay, that completed that side. Now I'm going to come out here with another line for the stem. I love double stem feathers. I think that that area in the middle, the dead space that you leave, is so pretty. Okay, so that connected with the feather where I had left off. And so now I'll come back down. Now the feather on this side will be a little bit more even because it's just going to go over to the line of uh, where the border is actually pieced onto the body of the quilt. So you don't have to have a feather that has even feathers on both sides. You see, if you need to reach out in one area, you can. Just around and follow, around and follow the stem. I think the secret to doing these feathers is following the stem as you come back, follow the last feather back up, and watch the motion as I do this. It's just left and right. So it's horizontal. When I'm doing it on this border, and when I was doing it here, it was up and down. And I think if you practice that, you're going to be able to do great feathers. And don't be discouraged if you've never done feathers before and you try them. and. You know, they kind of look like little um, half circles. They'll, they'll develop into a teardrop, and pretty soon you'll have your own style of a feather. So that's what I'm going to do on the neon thread to complete that area. Now I'm going to change the thread, and we're going to do some more stitch in the ditch. OK, now I have on a gray thread. And to do the stitch in the ditch, I'm going to put the extended base on my machine. so that I have more of a surface to work with my rulers. I'll smooth this over on the quilt. And I'm going to use a ruler. This, is, this one I really like. This one is about um, 5 inches by 8 inches. And it's just right for my hand to be nice and flat so my hand doesn't get any, um, any fatigue as I work long hours while I'm stitching in the ditch. Now I just went down and I pulled up my thread. So I got my bobbin thread to the top. And I'm going to stitch around this little window. And notice that I did not start in a corner 
or at a point because that's really hard to go back and meet up with the very same point. So if you start on the side on a long run on a square, rectangle, triangle, whatever, then you are much more likely to have a nice clean start and finish and that's very important especially when you turn the quilt over. You don't want to see a lot of little knobby things here and there, uh, bunches of thread. So that will eliminate all of that. Um, I'm going to put my machine on 12 stitches to the inch for stitch in the ditch. And then you can see my hand is nice and flat on the ruler. I don't have to hold on to any handles or do anything like that. It's just a nice guide and a nice relax pos relaxed position for my hand. So if I put that ruler a quarter inch away from the seam, then I'll be able to stay right in the ditch. There we go. And then this little top of this window is a, a little angle like that, and the angle back down like that. And then again, we can just go a little past where we started, and then we could do our little stitches. Now, I'm not finished quilting in here because I think I'm going to come in here and put some little window panes in. We can add things like that as we're quilting and make it much more interesting. Let's put some little panes across here like that. And we'll come back down here and go straight there. And then I don't want to stop in that intersection. And so I'm going to take these little stitches in the sti in, right in the ditch where I was before, and that will secure that. There we go. So that completed that one. This just adds that little detail. We'll do this one just like it. Watch how fast we can get this done. There we go. You know, a lot of times long arm quilters avoid stitch in the ditch because they think it takes a lot of time. And it does take a little practice but you can do it. I know you can because I can do it. And so it's so necessary to really complete the quilt in a good technical fashion and to secure all of the areas that need to be secured. If you don't secure an area with stitch in the ditch and then you place a design in that area, it could be off center. By securing that area and stitching in the ditch like I'm doing here, then you can do any kind of quilting that you want to in that area because it's secured. There's one more window here. Then we're going to go up and do the eaves of the house. And then we'll do the roof. There we go. Keeping the ruler. You learn to keep that ruler just a quarter inch away. And also with stitch in a ditch, you learn to stay on the downside. The seam is going to be pressed probably to one side or the other. And so your stitching needs to be on the side that's on the downside where the, the seams are not uh, so bulky. And your, your machine will want to stay right in that seam. It just kind of naturally goes there. So now I'm going to divide this little house, the front of the house from the side by stitching the ditch up here like that. And then I'm going to come straight across and we're going to put some detail in these eaves. Now I could just do the quarter inch like that, but I think I'm gonna do a little bit more detail. And because um, this, this quilt has quite a bit of quilting on it, so you wanna keep your quilt as balanced as possible. If you have a lot of quilting, then you gotta keep quilting. You know, just keep quilting. There we go, that looks very nice. I like that. And we'll just go around this little door. And again, I'm not starting in the corner. I think that we have learned that by now. There we go. And across, oftentimes I'm able to take it across without the ruler, but up and down is much, much faster for me if I use a guide. There we go. And now we're going to do a roof design. And I just don't want to do the common thing. I want to do something a little bit more unusual. Give it a little bit of texture. Now, this roof isn't straight on. It's set at an angle. So the design that I'm going to do has got to be at an angle. And I could divide that somehow with masking tape if I wanted to. or, or But I think I can do it just 
looking at it. You know, I think you could too. Now I'm just going to do the figure eights like this. As I come down, I'll get a little bit wider as I come down. Swing out a little bit more. And I'll come over here. Start the next row. And it's, I'm doing these slightly on the diagonal. Oh, I like that. It's nice texture. If you're going to do that much work, you might as well have thread that's going to show. Correct? You bet. We want our quilting to show because we take pride in our work. And it enhances the piecework so much. Come over here. One more long line, and then I can just do those short lines, and that roof will be finished. That's really going to stand out and look really nice on this quilt. Now, when I get to the top up here, I'm, I don't want to have to, um, you know, break my thread there, so I'm going to follow in the ditch. As I come back down, I just use my ruler, follow in the ditch to get back down to where I want to be. The fewer stops and starts you can do on the quilt, the better. Follow over here. Here we go. Very cool. Plus, I like the sound the machine makes, you know? Kind of fun. All right, let's go over to another house. We have one more house that we can do a roof on, and then we'll finish the sky, and this quilt will be finished. This roof we need to do something on, and I think something that would be really cute would be very simple. We're just going to do just some little circles as we go across. We'll follow this up, and, and this just almost disappeared in, in this fabric. But when, it's, um, when the quilt is actually hanging, you will be able to see the texture. Now I'm going to run into the window, which is good, because you know what? It needs a pane right now. So let's go ahead and put a pane in there. There we go. And then go back to where we want to be. There we go. And again, follow this line up. Diagonal lines are kind of hard to freehand, so probably a good idea to use a ruler on that part, and then all the way across up here. There we go. Fabulous. Finish that side, and end right here, and hide my stitches in that seam that is already there, in that stitch in the ditch that I've already completed. Okay, our roofs are finished. We just have a technique that I want to show you in this sky, but I need to change to, can you believe, even though this is blue fabric, I used a pink thread. So let me change that thread, I'll be right back. I have changed my thread to that pink thread, and I'm going to show you the technique that I used for the sky. Let's just look um, first at some of this other sky. You can see I even have feathers in here and lots of echoing. I call it an S echo. I just sort of make an S and then I echo and I'll throw in a feather now and again. So I'll start from where I had already um, had some of the technique quilted on the quilt. And then I'll start in here. You can see how it's just going in an S and it's just echoing. Okay, and if you get stuck, you can always just throw in a swirl. Remember that this is sky, and I love doing skies. I just, I just love doing skies. Let's throw in a feather maybe here too. There we go, and echo the feather. And then we'll go back into our S, just real curvy. S, there we go. And you do want to keep your quilting rather even. So, you know, if you're going to be like quarter inch apart on most of it, then continue to do that until you're finished. 
You don't want to get some that's um, closer and some that's further apart. But this one I've just kept even. A little swirl in here and then get it real curvy again until it's filled in. There we go, and it's done. I'm so excited about this. One of the reasons that I'm excited about this quilt is because of the design that I did in the middle. Let me just roll this down real quick and I'll show you what I did in the middle with the computerized quilting machine. In this Boston Commons area, I didn't want just cross hatching. That's the normal thing that people do. I wanted a design in there somehow. And so I found this beautiful design by Irina Bloom on the computerized machine and I put it in here, but it still didn't show enough, even though I used this dark purple thread. So I went over it four times with this thread. So it looks like thread painting. And then I still had an area on the sides in the corners where I needed another design, so I just stuck another computerized design there. And then I did cross hatching where I didn't have a design, and I used neon green thread, and then I echoed it again around four times just to make this pop. And you can see how beautiful this looks on the quilt. This blended of the computerized and the freehand is just every bit of the tool that, that I've dreamed about. So it's completed. Next time on Linda's Long Arm Quilting, Irina Bloom shows us her award-winning techniques on how to add color after quilting. We look at everything there is to know about bobbin winders, and I'll show you how to create an embroidered look with computerized quilting, and then add freehand thread painting on this Colorado log cabin quilt. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it. See you next time.